bringing the people behind our food to life. Vegetarianism has been around forever. I mean, really, you know, since the Greeks, it's, it has a long history. For me, um, I never really chose to be a vegetarian, and I've never actually described myself as a vegetarian, but I did live in a Buddhist community for 20 years. And as a community, we were vegetarian, and I cooked a lot in that community. I started Green's Restaurant from that community. And so that's what I was given to work with, you know, were the plant foods, and it was fine with me. I, I'm not really sure where the idea for vegetable literacy came from. You know, was there an aha moment? I'm not sure that there was, but, um, you know, because I'm thinking about plants a lot and I wanted to garden and over a period of years I had arranged my life so that I could garden. You know, you have to stay home. You have to make a commitment to it. You can't, you can't be traveling around and have a garden. Once I started doing that, I started really seeing plants in a, in a very fresh way. And um, things would come up and I'd find myself observing and asking questions and can you eat this? Can you eat that? Isn't it funny that all these cotyledons for all these different radishes and turnips look exactly the same? I should have labeled them, you know. Um, just things came up that related to the plant world and out of that the idea of becoming more literate about vegetables. Not just that they're pretty, not just that this is how you use them, but the principles that unite vegetables into families and herbs and flowers and so forth really started to intrigue me and vegetable literacy was the result of that. Everything in the world is divided into families. We are members of families and you know you'll often hear somebody say oh she has her father's nose or her mother's chin or you know her aunt's fiery temperament or you know there's certain attributes both both physical and and emotional in a way ascribed to people who are related by family. Well, it's the same is true in the plant world. And um, I'm not a botanist, so I had to figure it out. <laughs> but my father was a botanist. My brother's a botanist, you know. And I asked my father a long time ago, I said, how do you know what plants are related? And he used a kind of, uh, I guess, what's regarded now as an older means of categorizing, but which is morphology. He said by the flowers, you know, the f shapes of the flowers, the design of the flowers were, will tell you what's related. And it's pretty much true. I mean, you know, the Asteraceae or daisy family, all the flowers look like daisies in one form or another, whether it's a tiny little daisy on the tip of a lettuce that's going, you know, going about, about to go to seed, or whether it's a daisy itself, or whether it's the bloom of a scorzonera or a salsify, or whatever. You know, they make thistles and daisies and composite flowers. Cruciferous plants, the broccoli, all of those, cauliflower, kale, so forth, they, they all make cross-shaped flowers. Um, so you begin to look at the flowers, then you, maybe you look at the leaves, and you see, gee, they're sort of similar shapes to not always, but often. And um, so I just started to look at families and who's in them and um, what vegetables, what flowers, what herbs, you know, what, that are common to our lives. This is an exotic material. I love the umbilifers too. And in, in a way, that's what started me writing the book was seeing carrots in bloom and how absolutely beautiful those flowers are. And, and of course, that form repeats itself, but in very different sizes in the tiny little chervil blossoms or enormous angelica blossoms, you know, where the flower is as like, big as my head. You know, um, I love lovage, which is also in that family. There's lots of herbs in that family, as well as kind of workhorse vegetables, celery, carrots you know, parsnip, celery root. So I, I'm, I'm rather fond of the umbilifers. And they're fun to grow, too. You know, the garden was a huge inspiration for this book. It really brought me up close, you know, to plants and how they grow or don't grow, or what bugs they attract, and, and um, what they, where they like to be in the garden. And it just, it kind of blew my world open. It doesn't mean I'm a good gardener. I consider myself a really beginning gardener and um, 
and a mediocre gardener <laughs> probably at best. So this is not a book that will teach you how to garden, but hopefully it will suggest some ideas of how to look and how to just observe things. Um, the garden taught me a lot about looking at plants. And then you bring them in the kitchen, and this is also a cookbook, so um, hopefully that sense of looking and asking and wondering um, follows you into the kitchen with it.